Why is your editor so handsome? Only you can answer that one, Lupin. Second question we got on here is, do I think Apex is dying? Eh, not really. Not really. Player queues, like, queue, queue times are going to get a lot longer. They're going to be much longer on PC just because, like, the player base is mostly console, but the game's not dying. The game's going to be around for a long time because the console player base will always keep it alive. Crossplay surprise season five. That'd actually be kind of pog champ. Imagine. Dude, crossplay would be sick. They'd have to make it, like, opt-in, though. Like, for, like, like Warzone is a good example, right? But yeah, if we had console players in our ranked lobbies, like, queue times would be so much better. Plus, console players could actually prove themselves in competitive, you know? They could play in scrims and get actual practice and then go to tournaments and play on PCs. Secret to maintaining your aim? You just have to play a lot, man. Play a lot in practice. Did you get signed by TSM? I got noticed by T-Hump. I played in, T like, the original TSM roster for Apex was, uh, it was, it was Hal, it was T-Hump, and it was Prodigy Aces. And T-Hump and Prod both decided to move to Fortnite, so T-Hump uh, recruited me because I played in one of his sub-tournaments and he thought I was pretty good. So he introduced me to Hal, we played in some kill races, and just went from there. Alright, third YouTube question was, you seem to be good at almost any game you try. What skills carry over, whether it's competitive FPS or not? So, the things that carry over, obviously, is aim. That's, that's pretty much it, really. Aim. Aim is pretty much all that transitions. Uh, whenever it comes to a new game, you have to learn, you know, positioning, how to po properly position, uh, the movement of the game, stuff like that. Game sense, everything. But aim is universal. Why'd I change locations? Uh, I just wanted to get out of my room. I wanted to separate the living space, you know, like where I sleep and where I spend most of my time from my workspace. Because when I'm in here, now I'll be, you know, of the working mindset. How do I feel about Valorant? I think it has a good future. Little, little rough right now because of the anti-cheat situation and just you know cheaters are running rampant in high ranks but i think once they get that all sorted out the game will be really good how would i nerf the havoc so a suggestion that i put up on twitter actually for the havoc nerf would be vastly increase recoil and nerf damage per bullet but give it a permanent turbocharger i feel like we can all agree the charge up on the havoc is kind of just an annoying mechanic right it's not really fun it just makes the gun feel like slow and non-responsive, the charge up. Alright, we're going on to YouTube question number four. How do you see your future in TSM as well as in Apex and gaming in general? So, my future for TSM, I don't think I'm going anywhere. I think I'm staying here, you know? Whether it's as a, a pro Apex player, or in the future a content creator, or, you know, who knows? New games might come out later. But, I'm very comfortable in TSM. I'm, I'm happy with where I am here. So I don't think I'll be leaving anytime soon. Does Apex need a good bolt action sniper in it? I mean like so bolt action rifles, we can all agree, are super fucking satisfying to use, right? Like everyone agrees bolt actions headshotting someone, it's fucking great. It, it feels amazing. Getting that instant one shot kill with a Kraber or something. But the Sentinel, on the other hand, <laughs> it's just like it's efficient with bullets and competitive, right? But it's only really useful in competitive. And even then, it's super niche. So, like, bolt actions really don't work too well in a game like Apex. Sure, they're cool, but, like, they're not very practical. So, just going from console to PC, and did you ever play console? Uh, yeah, I played console the ages of, like, th when did I start? I think it was two, three? Whenever my brothers got me into it. I was either two or three. Maybe four. Three. Okay, yeah, three. So from, from the ages of three to 12 or 13, I was on console. And then I made the transition to PC in about 2012. What can you do to become a pro player? You have to commit. When you, if, if you really want to be a pro, it's all about commitment and just grinding and, and, you know, always looking to improve. And committing, I don't mean like, I'm um, playing four hours a day, you know, like a light grind. No, no, no. I mean like eight plus hours every day constantly pushing yourself to get better and you know doing everything in your power to to become the best player you can be all right we're moving on to question number five for youtube what made you get into esports or what game got you into fps so game that got me into fps was halo combat evolved first game i played uh and then what got me into esports was i really when i was in school um 
I really wasn't... I, I've never wanted to be the guy that goes to college and, you know, gets a normal job and does all that. I've always wanted gaming to be more. I've always wanted to be a pro or do YouTube or do Twitch or something, you know? I wanted I wanted my my job to be around gaming. Um, so I just did everything I could for that, and that's how I got into esports. I just started grinding and trying to put out as much content as I could. What made my channel grow so much? Definitely when I got noticed by T-Hump. Like, right at the beginning when I started to get into TSM, we, we saw a massive spike in growth, and it was all uphill from there. Am I going to show setup? Uh, we'll be doing a setup tour in the YouTube video for this. We're going to be uploading a, a uh, you know, a video showing this Q&A, and then at the end of it, we'll have a setup tour. Am I supportive of my gaming? Yeah, they're super supportive. Um, so, I've talked about it before, but my other brother, not, not Lion, not Lion in the chat. Um, my other brother, Garrett, he uh, was a semi-pro hockey player. So, they see it as the same thing as, you know, him playing hockey. They see it the same as a sport. So they're very, very supportive of me. Anime version behind me or what? So Jazzy drew that. Uh, I've been using that as my, twi uh, my Twitter profile pic and my uh, Discord profile pic. Take talent or hard work to be a pro? Both. Talent comes with hard work in my opinion. I think talent's something that you can build. Going on to question number six. This one is a three-parter. So how did I get known in the gaming community? Was it through streaming? Yes. Uh, I streamed, so, so a lot of you guys might not know this, but I've streamed for five years. I've streamed for a very long time since I was a kid, um, but it was across multiple accounts. Oh, wait, I skipped number four. She, all right, fuck it. We're, we'll answer number four instead. Uh, as one of the best Apex players out there, if not the best, who do you look up to? So I look up to, I look up to Noko. I look up to Wig. Yeah, mostly just Noko and Wig. Because they're, they're really good, like, just really good people. They inspire me to be better. Like, their communities are really just, like, nice, and they're, they're really positive people. They make me want to be better. Favorite anime ever. So the anime question, right? I rate animes really, really differently. Like, I have top animes for different, like, categories, right? So, like, for the best animation I've ever seen, by far, it's Demon Slayer. But for the best, like, story and just, like, character growth and everything like that, Hunter x Hunter. What happened in high school that made me drop out? Um, I don't know how to word this. I don't, I don't want to, like, make it sad. Uh, pretty much, I'm just, like, I went through a, uh, a phase where I was really agoraphobic. Like, being around a lot of people made me really anxious. So I was just, like, really stressed out all the time at school, and I would get severe migraines every single day. Um, and my attendance started to, to fail. So I ended up just dropping out is the, the quickest way to put it. Streaming's helped me a lot with that, though. Streaming and going to events. Like, I'm actually really comfortable around people now. Before, I used to, like, not even be able to talk if I didn't know the person. How do you convince your parents to be a pro player? Uh, well, for me, I was very vocal about it since I, since my freshen, freshman year of high school. I was very vocal with them about what I wanted to do, that I wanted to pursue gaming, and I, you know, I wanted to do YouTube, I wanted to do Twitch, I wanted to do all this stuff, and, you know, they knew. So once they saw it start to actually pick up, they were, they were like, oh, shit, okay. This is, this is actually real. They're actually doing it. Shit, what were we on? Number six? Yeah, yeah, number six. All right. So the, this one I already answered. It was definitely through streaming. Tiamp helped me out with this. Uh, number two, in my honest opinion, do you think someone playing on a 17-inch 60 hertz laptop can, that can barely hold 60 FPS will get a boost, aka improve with an Apex from moving to a proper PC? Yes. That's like... <laughs> Your gear definitely holds you back. If you're stuck on 60 hertz and your PC can barely even push 60 FPS, like you definitely need need to upgrade. It's definitely worth the upgrade if you care about your performance. And then, did I ever play on a laptop? Yes. Uh, hang on, let me see if I can pull up a picture of the laptop that I used to use. So my first ever laptop, bro. I'm not even kidding. No cap. This. This was my first ever PC or laptop. And I played on the, I, I played Minecraft on this fucking thing for like two or three years on like 20 FPS, bro. A fucking, a Nickelodeon laptop. This thing was like $200, not even. This thing was so trash. So trash. I had to play, I had to play Minecraft on like, you know, like the super short render distance where like everything around you is just fog. I had to play on that with 20 frames. Favorite Apex tournament? 
Uh, so Poland, because it was my first major, has like a is definitely like I think Poland's production and just like everything about you know the Poland tournament was was really really good and it was it was an incredible experience. But I think my favorite tournament has to be the X Games. Going to X Games because it was my first ever LAN. I had never been to LAN before X Games. So going to my first tournament and then winning it is is something that I'll never forget. Plus, winning a gold medal at X Games is like, you know, not a lot of people can say that. Like, I didn't even... When, when we were there, me and Jordan, I remember, we were in the hotel room with me, Jordan, and Hal. And we were like... We don't even care about the money. It's just the gold medal is just, it, it's so cool to, you know, be able to say, hey, you have a, you know, you have a gold medal from X Games. Like, that's so special. And that's what we were, or at least that's what I was playing for. We're going on to the next YouTube question, boys. If you could rework one legend, who would it be and why? What type of abilities would you like to see in future characters? So, I think Lifeline needs a rework. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. I think her drone should be a more, uh, a better part of her kit. She's a really good idea. It's just her execution is poor. I think if her drone was like, everyone here has played Overwatch, right? You guys know Baptiste. You know how his ultimate goes out and it's like a fucking, it goes up in the air and it just floats there and it keeps people alive. It makes them unable to die. Okay, so instead of invulnerability, what if it pulsed? and gave you 25% of your health per pulse. And it could pulse eight times, but it could also be destroyed. But it would have to have a minute long cooldown, like a very long cooldown. Or you could even make that her ultimate and just completely scrap the idea of lifeline packages. Cause let's be honest, the lifeline package, it's just RNG. And more often than not, you're just disappointed. <laughs> Any tips on what to think about practicing crosshair placement? Always just keep your crosshair head level. Regardless of what game you're playing, try to keep it head level when you're moving around. Alright, we're on to the last YouTube question. What do you think about the current state of the game? And what do you think needs to be improved first? So, we could probably all agree on this. Loot distribution. They need to, they need to completely redo loot. Like, loot distribution is probably the biggest issue in Apex for me, just because you end up... So, in the current meta or in the current, the way the loot currently works is you drop in, you run around, you find like three knockdown shields, four white armors, eight white helmets, 16 P2020s, and 30 different Mozambiques. But if instead they, they just chose, you know, have everyone spawn with Evo shields, that's one item out of the loot pool. Spawn of the P2020, that's two items out of the loot pool. Now you could, you could take it one step further. You could make everybody spawn with white uh, a full white loadout, meaning white knockdown shield, white helmet, white backpack. That's now five items removed from the loot pool, which gives all the other items, you know, higher spawn rates. So you're going to find more, you're going to find more shield cells, more, more meds, more, you know, R99s, more guns, just more, more everything, more important gear will be spawning just by removing those five items that just really don't need to spawn. No one goes out of their way to look for a P2020, right? I don't think... There's some some weirdos who go out there and they're like, I love Hammerpoint P2020, and they, they make it their goal to find a P2020, right? But, like, that percentage of players, like, that's that's so small. And plus, if you're spawning with a P2020, then all you have to do is find hammer points. So either way, it's even better. Because by removing P2020 from the loot tables, you're making hammer points spawn more as well. They're, they're opening up, you know, that chance for, for a hammer point to spawn. Thoughts on putting Select Fire on Havoc and Prowler by default? Maybe same thing with Double Tap on Eva. I think that would be a good buff for those weapons. So the reason that you... So everybody knows the Prowler is good, right? Like, especially after its buff and the R99 got nerfed, the Prowler is really fucking good. If you have a Select Fire for it. But the issue is you need that Select Fire. So it gets outshined, especially in competitive. You don't see many people running the Prowler just because you need to loot a lot more. Because you need to find that select fire. So everyone's just going to still opt for the R99 because you need less attachments. But if you were to make the Prowler spawn with select fire, then the R99 is going to be outshadowed. So it's like you kind of need to... You kind of need to find a balance for it. Like, they would have to nerf the Prowler's damage if they were to make it spawn with the select fire.
Disruptor rounds. So Disruptors were like... I... I think Disruptors were fine. I, I know I'm in the, in the minority here for this opinion. Disruptors, I think, were healthy for the game. They were just overtuned, and they couldn't find the right balance for them, so they just removed it. So all they had to do to nerf Disruptors was make it so that the hop-up no longer had an effect past a certain range threshold. Because the, the issue with Disruptors, where you could be across the, the map, someone could be 100 meters away, you're spamming Disruptors, and they're still doing 20 damage per shot. But if you just made it so that after like a 50 meter threshold, the Disruptor stopped having that effect, it would have been fine. Because then it could have been used up close as a way to break people's armor. Rather than being something annoying that was poking people from across the map for all their shields. Some more playground modes for everyone to play? I think customs should definitely be something that comes to, to all content creators. Or not even just content creators, just to everybody. But obviously they can't just give it to everybody initially. So... I think they should start by expanding and giving content creators access so that they can host community, you know, they can have community nights where they can, you know, just run games with their subs or, you know, do random game modes, do do goofy shit, you know? So that's it for the Q&A, boys. This is about as full cam as I can get. All right, we're going on a walk, gentlemen. We're going on a walk. Okay, so, I can't really see a whole lot. Well, I can't see. Now I can see what you guys see. Now All right, lay, 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 lay. this is the desk space. No fucking idea who he Bet is. your ass I got snacks. All right, this is what my setup's looking like. Alpha <laughs> tray, lay, lay, lay. That guy. We got no chat. Idea well, that's a stream PC. So we got OBS, everything over there with chat. Primary monitor, and then primary chat monitor. We got our fan art fucking monitor. PSM banner, <clears throat> and then for the rest of the room. Got this air hockey, or not air hockey, I forgot what this thing's called. We got one of these for when the boys come over. We have fun with this thing. We got the TV over the setup, which swings out. So when I got boys over, we chill on the couch, swing the fucking TV out, watch whatever. And then we got the workout. So workout streams are going to be coming soon. This is as far as I can get the cam. But, you know, we got this fucking thing, I'm probably not going to use this. We got the treadmill, I'll probably use that. We got our weights and everything. Then, of course, we got the PCs. So the stream PC is scuffed, okay? Stream PC is hella scuffed. This boy is missing his side panel, okay? Scuffed, actually scuffed. But, but, the gaming PC. Ah, shit, the panel's on the wrong side. The gaming PC, this boy, oh! My fire. Ignore the cable management. It's a little scuffed, but hey, it works, okay? We got floodlights, LED floodlights. We got one there, and we got one behind my, my, my art monitor. Right. Oh. Shit, hang on, right here. For the backdrop lighting. Then at nighttime, we got this. We got the overhead LEDs. Those go pretty hard. We also have... Besides just that, for the TV and shit, we got these big ass speakers and this like, I forgot what this radio does, but like this thing like actually, you can listen to radio stations if you want. I don't use it for that, but it can do it. <clears throat> That's the setup we got going right now. Shit goes pretty hard. It's definitely an upgrade from my last setup. My last setup was in a, in my bedroom, super tiny. Super fucking tiny setup. I barely had any room to do anything. But in here, we got all the room we need. Especially if we want to do workout streams. The workout stream should be coming once Jordan um, once Jordan gets his... Uh, he has another computer coming for his garage. Oh, and then we're going to be doing workout streams with Jordan. And maybe Wig. Maybe Wig.